Every time that you log in, it buffers your IP address. Now, by the way, how many of you follow, are following this whole Viacom YouTube lawsuit? The most cynical, hypocritical thing I've ever seen is Google, for the past five years, telling me and you and everybody in the world, IP addresses aren't important. IP addresses don't tell you anything. And in the Viacom lawsuit, when Google gets hit with a subpoena for everybody who uses I, YouTube's IP address, Google goes into court with an enormous, fat, 430-page brief detailing how IP addresses can be de-anonymized, which we're going to talk about, and indicate the exact person that used it. Most hypocritical legal brief ever written. Google on cell phones. Listen. <laughs> One of the things that iPhones are going to be doing is stripping away the last shred of privacy that you have. And we're going to talk about this. If you use a computer, if you're careful about static versus dynamic IP addresses, if you use Firefox and it wipes out your cache and your browsing history and all of that, you have some tiny sense of anonymity. Of course, until you log into somewhere, then you're screwed, of course. With your cell phone, it's you. Google is already registered as a telecom, which means they get the full CNAM file. For those of you who are not at that sufficiently high nerd level, let me tell you a CNAM file is your subscriber data. Google gets it. So if they know that cell phone 212-555-1234 is checking on Google Maps for a certain address, or is scanning a barcode, or is looking up, you know, doctors in Milwaukee, they know it's you. You can't hide if you do it on the cell phone. The cell phone is you. And that is the last shred of your anonymity. I mean, here's, what's amazing is, they put stuff up there that if I was their ad guy, I wouldn't want to let people realize this until it's too late. But here's what they put up there. When users snap a shot of a barcode, the app pulls up reviews and price computations from the web. Yes, I will know everything that you're interested in if you use that phone to snap a barcode and have it searched. They have something called Commandro, a GPS, a GPS enhanced social networking app that lets you map and track your friends in real time and them track you, of course. And here's, here's the last one, the creepiest one. To me, probably not to you, they have something called cooking capsules. Displays cooking videos and ingredient lists, then uses the phone's location awareness to find the nearest grocery store. See, I find that creepy. You may just find it useful. Now, a little bit of honesty here. Just in case you're really careful, when you browse, how many people here, careful, I'm going to use the word not, how many people here have not Googled their own name? Do you own a computer? One guy. You own a computer? All right, I'll talk to you about this later. You're security, watch this guy. <laughs> okay. How many people here, a show, a show of hands, how many people here have Googled their own address? Pretty much everybody. How many have Googled their own phone number? Okay, almost everybody. Now, think about this for a second. How many people here have Googled their own social security number? Lots of hands. Why? But it's all linked together at that IP address. Trust me, they now know it's you. Now, when I first started giving this talk, when Google was becoming big, I put this up here as a joke. You know, I said, someday there's going to be a trial. And if you look back on the old DVDs, or probably far back enough their videos now, or were, you'll see that I put this up on the screen. And I said, someday a guy's going to kill his wife. And they're going to find that his Google browsing history. They're going to find poisons, divorce lawyers, Aruba, offshore banking, and life insurance. And they're going to convict him. Let me tell you what happened last year. <laughs> There's a guy by the name of Justin Barber in Florida. Justin Barber, 
calls 911, help, help, I've been shot. These criminals broke into my house, ski masks, you know, guns, they shot my wife, they shot me in the chest, help, send police, send an ambulance. The cops come, they think he's the victim. One smart detective says, hmm, looks in his cash, finds out that two months before the shooting, he had Googled, trauma cases, gunshot, right chest. Mr. Barber is now on death row in Florida, honestly. You can Google it. <laughs> now, again, you've got to really look at the totality of what Google does. And if you do, you will understand pretty quickly they want to suck out your brain and put it in a database. And among their recent activities have been to buy DoubleClick, which is basically every damn thing you do on the net. FeedBurner, what tells more about you than your RSS feeds? Honestly, if you have an RSS feed to a Nigerian newspaper, you're probably from Nigeria. If you have an RSS feed to a gay website, you're probably gay. If you have an RSS feed to the Jerusalem Post, you're interested in Israel. I said that because my buddy from the Jerusalem Post is here. <laughs> feed burner, perfect example. Google bought it. If you use Google Docs, if you go onto Google and you use them to compose your business documents and your personal letters and what have you, I mean, what else is left? Now, just in terms of creepiness, two things I want to mention, Google Health and 23andMe. Google Health, people are going to start using Google as the repository of your electronic medical records. That's pretty much it, guys. And 23andMe is mapping everyone's genome that comes in and says, I want it done privately. It's owned by Sergey Brin's wife and funded by Google. Google Friend Connect, everybody you know. Google Profile, just in case Google hasn't been able to build the most detailed, you know, J. Edgar Hoover wet dream profile about you, <laughs> they give you the opportunity to, to just fill in the blanks for them. <laughs> Google Health, now, this is pretty much the last thing I'm gonna say about Google, but I wanna leave you with a sense of Google's attitude towards who owns the data about you. Their attitude is, once it's in their database, it's not yours anymore, it's theirs. And I gotta tell you something, they're right. Once it's in their database, they own it. I wanna give you some examples of how they've responded to complaints, pretty legitimate complaints. Street View, book scans and copyrights, YouTube, the lawsuit by Viacom, and misuse of trademarks. This is one of my favorite Google stories. A guy by the name of Kevin Bankston, who unluckily for Google worked for the EFF. Kevin Bankston says, hey, I wanna take a look at street view of my house. So he pulls it up and it's a picture of him walking in front of his house. And he freaks out and he calls Google. He says, you know, taking a picture of my house is one thing, but that's me, take it out of your database. And they essentially said, Mr. Bankston, bite me. Because he's from EFF, 8,000 lawyers parachuted into the situation. <laughs> and, and, and they took down his photo. And because it was their bad luck at that point to have set a precedent, God bless the EFF, they now blur the faces of everybody in Street View. And yes, I checked. Hotel Pennsylvania also. But they had to have lawyers on their ass for months. Good example of their attitude. By the way, th oh, well this is more for investigative seminars, but just in case you think Google does that, pretty much every tax assessor does this now also. This is a real case that I did where I was looking up a guy's house, the real property, and when I pulled up his house, not only did I get a picture of his house, but I saw there's no fence, the two cars, and that he has a big inquisitive dog which for an investigator is a useful thing to know. 
Let's talk about what's, what's, what's lovingly in the most Orwellian language possible called the Google Book Project. It's for your benefit. So if you want to research something, my goodness, every book is in their system. Yeah, there's this one problem. There's this thing called copyright, which they don't care about. And the greatest, the greatest quote was from a guy in the UK. UK people know how to be obnoxious. And he said, you know, I'm t almost tempted to do this in a British accent, but I won't subject you to that. He says, he says, to endorse what Google is doing, scanning and copyrighted books, is to say it's okay to break into my house because you're going to clean my kitchen while you're there. <laughs> it's absolutely true. What they're doing is improper, and there's been a big war about that, and Google has essentially said, eh, tough. Whoop, what the hell? Okay, how do I undo that? Uh, press that, no, press that. One second. Okay. What I wanted to do is I wanted to go back. Well, it's not letting me... Uh, Oh, no. Okay. Thank you, brother nerd. Perfect example is misuse of trademarks. If you work for the Coca-Cola company and you bid the highest on Google for the ad word Pepsi, anytime somebody Googles Colas or Pepsi, they will get a link to your site. Never mind that millions and millions of these things are trademarked and that there's been problems with Ford searches going to Nissan and Coke going to Pepsi and things like that. Google just doesn't care. And by the way, final word on <laughs> their relative sense of humor. A CNET reporter, the online newspaper, decided to go and, and, and interview the Google staff. And before they did, before, before this reporter, this intrepid reporter, went and interviewed the Google PIO guy, public information officer, he Googled him. And he went in with a big stack of stuff, and he said, halfway through the interview, he said, by the way, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about privacy concerns. You know, it's, it's now possible to pretty much know everything about someone, and there's probably even more stuff that you're not putting out on the net, which we now all know is true. Here, for example, is the stack of stuff I Googled on you. And if you read this article, which New York Times, uh, no, I'm sorry, Wall Street Journal. If you read this article or look up this story, probably not on Google, but if you look up this story, you'll see that what happened is this Google PIO guy jumped up, started screaming at the guy, threw him out of the office, and banned all interviews with CNET for a year. Sense of humor is lacking. Now, Yahoo, which is in some areas even bigger than Google, most of us don't know that, but it is. At least they're upfront about it. Yahoo says, once you register with us and sign in, you're not anonymous. We're gathering your stuff. Microsoft, I mean, you all knew Microsoft was doing it without me telling you. <laughs> Let's talk for a second about de-anonymizing data. How many of you in this room, just show of hands, think that at least most of the time, or a substantial part of the time, you are anonymous on the net. How many of you think that? <laughs> See, this is an awesome crowd. I, I, I don't know where the camera is. I can't tell where the, the video is being made from. But if it's not being made from in the back, nobody raised their hand. So this is the right crowd for me. <laughs> University of Texas was able to take Netflix purchases and IMDB postings, check for proximity and time, and de-anonymize some of the people by saying, OK, this person checked on Netflix for Gone with the Wind. I'm making that up. And the next day, wrote